welcome everybody to the uh, podcast. It's IoT application, the public sector. I have with me Chris, Chris Miller. Chris, do you want to give a brief introduction about yourself and what you actually do and where you've actually come to this point? Have you Chris? Yes. Well, hello. Uh, so um, I'm Chris Miller. I was a police officer. Uh, I did 32 years in the police, did a the full police career. Uh, and I left the police 11 years ago, having retired following a full service career. I got very interested in the latter stages of my police career in trying to find ways of solving sticky old problems with new new technology and new thinking. So that's that got me in the latter stages of my police career into thinking about how technology could help me as a senior police leader solve crime and commu- keep communities safe, protect children from harm and so on. And since I've left the police, I've carried on with that interest, both um, working with academics, uh, with business leaders in the tech sector, and keeping contacts with police and public sector uh, former colleagues and, and current colleagues to so that I can help them to learn about new technology and potentially introduce it into their workspace so that they can become more effective uh, and more efficient. So currently, uh, I, I perform a number of different roles with um, as an associate to various industry organizations and I also work alongside various colleagues in the public sector in health, policing, criminal justice and, and local justice where I perform a number of functions but one of those is very much trying to, to um, stretch the availability and to improve the thinking and availability of uh, technology to help colleagues in the in the public sector improve their performance. Right, that's great. So, uh, can you give us examples of some of the IoT uh, products that you actually use within the tech field? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, when I was in the police, I helped develop a, a program to help manage prolific offenders in the community, burglars and car thieves, by using uh, GPS tags so that we could keep a keep track of their movements. So this wasn't a this wasn't just a control mechanism, although there was an element of that. It was also they were these folk were in programs that we had designed for them to help them stay out of crime, and we needed to make sure that they were keeping to their their end of the bargain. They were they were given a, um, a rehabilitation program that was to help them address the things that caused them to commit crime. But we needed to make sure that whilst they were engaging the program, they weren't also uh, freelancing and doing burgling and theft, which is where they'd come from. Hence, we used uh, we used tags with them. So that provided us with a rich source of data. And for many of them, it was helpful to them to help them stay on the straight and narrow because they knew that they would be caught if they, uh, if they did commit an offence. But for those who did commit offences, it meant that we had good information very quickly and we knew that the programme for them wasn't wasn't working and that they needed to uh, be dealt with in a different way and needed to go through criminal justice so um and i've carried on uh, with some of that work so i've worked with a small tech company and they have now developed a tag that can tell if somebody's driving a vehicle or not the previous version of tag just knew if somebody was moving about but that could make them either a driver or a passenger the new this new tag can work out if somebody is a driver and so for people who are under driving restrictions they're disqualified uh, for whatever reason or banned from banned from driving or holding particular licenses and that's a way of managing them so that's in a that's in a quite late stage pilot so we are we've tested the technology in the community with with volunteers who have um, tested it to destruction and we're about to start using that on offenders in the community and what we want them to do of course is to not drive because they're banned uh, but if they do drive we want to make sure that they're brought to justice quickly and safely rather than being chased across country because a a police officer has spotted them driving when they shouldn't be. Um, So some other work I've done is I've used uh, an an alcohol monitoring tool uh, with colleagues in in children's social care, which helps parents to, or it helps social workers understand better if parents who have uh, an alcohol problem and who are risky to their children, where those parents are, in terms of the promises that they will inevitably make the parents that they are in fact keeping their drinking under control so this is a device that the 
parents blow into two, three, four times a day. It reads their breath alcohol level, takes a photograph and transmits it to a hub so the social worker can see whether in fact they are as abstemious as they are promising to be. Uh, a very similar a very similar piece of kit that we use, same for drugs. So it's a piece of kit that reads some um, uh, reads fingerprint sweat and can work out whether somebody has got drug metabolites in their system. So again, it's the same thing. Parents who have a problem with substance misuse and who are a risk to their children and who are in the um, are in the supervision of social care will often make assertions and promises about their behaviour that may or may not be true. And this uh, this technology helps social workers to know whether or not the parents are telling the truth. And in fact, they are staying clear of drugs because drugs obviously in the in the system of a parent and in their lives as a risk to the children so that's a couple of things um been working with another with another company a similar alcohol technology that uh, that can stop a person driving a car if they've got alcohol in their system so it's a device that's attached to um, the ignition of a car and the driver has to blow a clean sample before the car will start so these are all these are all pieces of technology that help manage risk and they also help the people, uh, the, the subjects of the of the technology, help them improve their own behaviour because they're, they're, it's a, it's a, like a monitor. It, it's a monitor. It's a control. It's a it's something they can turn to, um, which means that they they break bad habits and they they socialise themselves and behave better. So just going back to the alcohol monitor, obviously. Uh, uh, it's an intervention to stop people from over drinking and then, you know, so there isn't a problem with the social worker coming in to make any sort of a, uh, plan, plans to take the child away or, or social plans. I mean, how does that actually Yeah, so, so it can be, it can work in a couple of ways. So uh, it may be that the social workers are concerned that the excessive drinking of one or more parents poses a risk to their children. And the social worker is, is minded to, to start going through the legal process to have those children removed um, and it's a it's a sort of um, a, a staged approach to enabling the parents to demonstrate why in fact they can those children can remain safely with their parents or it may be used in circumstances where the children have already been removed the parents have gone on to a, an alcohol um, sort of reduction program now yeah. declare themselves to be free of the uh, the problems of excess drinking and this gives them a chance to demonstrate that over a lengthy period they can control their drinking and therefore the children can be safely returned to them because because ultimately you want children to grow up with their biological parents in a family environment but of course you don't want the children to be at risk and um these are you know they're difficult decisions to make but the the more certain that the the system the social workers are on the system as a whole that the parents can be safe that they're not drinking to excess then it, the, the easier it is to make that decision and then similarly if you can't be certain uh, and you've got the evidence of that they are still excessively drinking then it makes the decision to keep the children away from the parents easier as well because these are very emotionally laden decisions really do really hard really hard decisions for the parents to receive and the and the social workers and the courts to make so i mean uh, what was the traditional way of i mean how would they check if somebody was excessive on substance abuse or alcohol or drugs, I mean, did they have to get a court? Is it taken from samples or from hair? Yeah, so so, so uh, a court. So if the, if the children were removed or were about to be removed from the parents, then that would be through the the family court process, and the court would require the social services or the parents to provide to provide um, uh, hair samples. Now, hair samples can tell you about historic drug use and they can also to some extent tell you about historic alcohol use but but you know it's not it's not quite the same as knowing in the here and now that somebody is is drinking excessively or they can they can put the um, the parents onto a uh, an alcohol course but again of course people behave well on their course but it's what do they do between between sessions so i mean they're they're, they're difficult judgment calls for courts and social workers to make and the technology enables them to make those decisions with more certainty right so it allows that intervention at an earlier stage yes. as opposed to you know somewhere f further on down the line yes. they might revert back to heavy drinking. Yes. So, yes yes 
So we have all these massive amounts of data, you know, that, that you're collecting from all these different subjects. I mean, how can we use all that data in in that whole complete public sector field to to uh, stage our lives or even policing or even social services? How can we can um, intervention it prior to well, well I mean the the so the um, arrival of artificial intelligence and the possibility of machine learning does open up a whole range of possibilities for you know, public sector for social work um, and for community safety because people who pose a risk to others or pose a risk to themselves that tends not to come out of a clear blue sky there tends to be a long a long history that's recorded in the records of many agencies so the police social services hospitals probation prison housing um, you know are just some of those this where uh, pe people who end up uh, you know finding it a struggle to sort of, to you know, carry on a safe and secure life and be be good be good parents and good family members they tend to have a long a long history in the system so artificial intelligence and machine learning potentially offers a real sort of sort of golden way into that because if it can bring together all of those data streams with the appropriate weighting then it will enable professionals much earlier on to to to, to realize that there's a case that needs some um, specific intervention earlier intervention out of you know dealing with people in a secure mental hospital or in custody or taking their children away from them which is you know the real tough end of 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 um providing sort of you know, social stability in families and communities is very very expensive it's much cheaper uh, much uh, it's cheaper and more uh, and and more sort of humane if you like um to intervene earlier in the lives of these families so they can get the help they need in order to stop them being at the real tough end of life you know yeah so i mean what are the challenges faced to actually bring this te technology into uh, the public sector obviously you must have some people are set in their own ways and you know how do you prove yeah, so there's a there's a there's a, te there's a technical challenge of course so I used to, as I said, I used to be in the police, and with my own, within my own police force, we had 16 different um, data information systems that were computerized. So that was 16 systems. Our own. That information was information under our control, and so you know, pulling that together was a challenge. So you move beyond the police into you know, health, children, social care, local authority. They also have lots of different uh, information systems as well. Um, so knitting all that together, you know, getting the right interface to knit that together, that's a technical problem. But then you've got the whole emotional uh, and legal issue around uh, the integrity of data, the um, the appropriateness of sharing data between uh, sharing data and information between organisations, uh, and and people are very probably correctly very cautious about that. So, you know, you need to have a good understanding that the data is going to be secure in the first case. Um, and, and secondly, that the reason that you're sharing it between agencies is is underpinned by good solid law. So all of that is um, needs still needs to be worked through. But but certainly some conversations I've been having recently with people in this field, real, they realize that artificial intelligence is coming, that it opens up the possibility of of you know, making new connections and uh, delivering new solutions. And so it's that reticence about being a bit nervous about a technology that that, that might be troublesome, whilst at the same time glimpsing uh, you know, a, a future that might make things easier. And um, it, that'll be a journey, that, you know, that'll be a journey of the next few years as as um, the professions catch up with the technology. Yeah, which is, which it seems, I mean, it, you know, it seems to be moving very, very quickly. Yes. The IoT devices, cameras, uh, yes. device sensors, all that information is starting to really build up in terms of the gadgets. Was it's about yes. how we pull all this data together and then use yes. it in, as you yes. said, yes, way which might benefit. Yes. So, look. On that note, I think thank you very much, Chris. Uh, we we'll look forward to the next one, and we'll come out with some more of the. Uh, you can tell us. A, about your next range of technological um, 
adventures that you're actually moving into. But thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave the comment. See you soon.